आर 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 इज ऑलरेडी वन ऑफ माई फेवरेट मूवीज ऑफ ऑल टाइम एंड इज ऑलरेडी ए क्लासिक इन माई आईज ऑनिस्टली स्पीकिंग आई कुड एक्चुअली टॉक अबाउट दिस मूवी फॉर आवर्स एंड आवर्स एनालाइजिंग एंड जस्ट गीकिंग ओवर हाउ एक्सीडेंटली एवरीथिंग इज पुट टूगेदर बट दिस वीडियो इज इंट अबाउट दैट इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ आर 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 परफेक्टली इंट्रोड्यूस इट्स टू मेन कैरेक्टर्स राम एंड भीम सो लेट्स बिगिन a new chapter begins called fire there's a wide shot as we are introduced to the setting the outskirts of delhi thousands and thousands of people are cornering a police station for the arrest of the freedom fighter lala lajpat rai the head officer philip green is in a state of panic the officers outside whose duty is to hold the line are sweating nervously as the indian protesters almost seemingly break through the fence This is a fantastic setup. The film has purposely kept our hero out of sight until the time is just right when he visually emerges through the flames. Ram is stunned, silent and unflinched by what's happening around him. He stands fearless even in the face of death while everyone else falls in fear. The fire symbolism is introduced right in the beginning as he's framed with it. The cops are ordered by Philip to arrest the man who dared to throw a rock inside the station. The focus shifts from Philip to Ram. Through a fantastic use of slow motion, Ram gets ready with his stick, runs and leaps across the fence to follow the order. He makes his way through the crowd by robotically beating everyone with his stick. There are wide shots for us to really sink in the fact that there are so many people and it's easy for us to understand this visually as Ram is the only one not wearing a turban. and this made me wonder how the hell is ram going to arrest one man another thing that ran across my mind is that our hero an indian is going against his own people so much so that he's dedicated to arresting one man upon his superior's orders this is addressed when an indian calls ram a double crosser when the crowd slowly begins to get the upper hand ram is on the ground the camera is done with him buried under the thousands of indians piling on top of each other it's gritty and handheld we are looking at this from ram's perspective Little light seeps in through the tiny spaces until Ram regains his strength and makes his way out of the crowd. The man he's after now begins to run. Now we really know how dangerous Ram is. When Ram scopes the area to hatch a plan, it's all done visually. There's a POV shot and Ram's reaction shot to visually communicate what he is thinking. Even the victim is now stuck as he simply realizes that he has reached a dead end. Ram makes his way to the top and pushes through the freedom fighters in front of him to the point where they fall and roll on dangerous rock formations. There's a gradual build up as we see the Indian on the edge nervously worried from different angles ranging from medium shots to POV shots to really draw out that feeling of the fear of what's about to happen until he falls on his neck and dies. And the shot shots has really made me feel the impact. Ram finally catches the man he was after and drags him back to the station. The recurring theme of fire returns as Ram still manages to put up a fight and a dummy on fire falls on him but eventually Ram succeeds in his mission and brings the freedom fighter to Philip's knees and he goes to wash his face where we once again see fire and Ram isn't completely invincible he made it back of course but he too is bruised battered and bleeding and the speed of the scene matches with how the character is feeling the shot is slow and carefully panning towards Ram as he's tired and as he gets refreshed it cuts closer the speed gets a little faster and once he's fully energized it quickly cuts to show him getting back to work matching how he feels now the people are scared of him and as they retreat we get to see ram's unbroken facial expression and we get to see a vulnerable side to him that we are yet to explore and what i love about this scene is the fact that it's not just about how cool and badass ram is because as accidentally it is made i do feel a little mixed about it in terms of the emotion because this man is brutally beating his own people and in this shot as ram sees everyone retreating you can see the heartbreak on his face he doesn't want to do this but he has to and it's not at all an easy choice later on we see how upset and angry ram is for not getting promoted as special officer and he lets out his rage in this fantastic training montage So this is why this introduction just perfectly works on all levels. Through this character introduction, we know that Ram works for the British. He is ultimately strong. He has connection to fire. He is determined, and that he wants to get promoted in the official British ranks. Apart from the unbelievably magnificent filmmaking, we learn about who Ram is and what his external goal is, while also maintaining mystery about why he is working for the British without a single word of dialogue or exposition. Think about that. Every single one of these aspects are conveyed to us through visuals. It's it's too genius, man. 
it just excels in writing and filmmaking. Now we get to the introduction of our second protagonist, Beam, through the new chapter called Water. But we don't initially see him. We see a special advisor talking about Beam to the villain Scott's right hand man, Edward, as he warns the Britisher about how dangerous Beam is and how he's on a mission to retrieve the girl Molly that the English had forcefully abducted from her village. This is all build up and it needs a payoff and to have a satisfactory payoff, instead of just being told about the might of Beam, right after that we actually get to see it. There's a wide shot to show we are outside in the Delhi forest. There's a remarkable shot of Beam as the camera zooms towards him while also rotating as we see him next to a water body, bringing the theme of the element of water as he's pouring blood on himself. We don't know why he's doing this. That is until a wolf begins to chase him. That is when we understand that his goal was for him to be the bait. And again, this is communicated through visuals. As Beam runs across the forest at great speed, he notices the footprints of a tiger and looks around in fear. To put us in his shoes, we get a brief POV pan as Bhim scans the area. There's a shot of the tiger patiently waiting to strike amidst the grass. There's a setup and it pays off in Bhim narrowly avoiding the tiger from attacking him. And this moment is really emphasized through the use of slow motion. The momentum of the scene then changes. The wolf is shooed away by the tiger and then the tiger begins to pursue Bhim across the forest. The camera moves at the rapid pace of the man. The geography is clear, we know where they are and their spatial relationship with one another. Beam's allies who were earlier shown in the scene are beginning to be shown once again and we realize that it was their plan to catch the animal. But the net was built for a wolf, not a tiger and so this forces Beam to solve this problem by encountering an unexpected situation. He uses his super strength to hold the ropes that keep the net intact. There's a shot where the tiger and Beam are evenly framed as both of them struggle to get their moment to shine as they roar back at each other. We really feel Beam struggle to attach the hook as we are shown his bulky muscles trembling while also showing how strong the tiger is. And after the rope breaks, he resorts to his last method and that is by drugging the tiger to lose consciousness. And I love that it doesn't just end there. We get to see the tiger struggle back to maintain consciousness before eventually losing. And then Bhim places his head on the tigers, apologizing to him for using him for his own need. And through this introduction, we not only get to know Bhim's strength and connection to water, but also his innocence and empathy that grounds him emotionally, while also communicating to us his goal of bringing back Mali from the clutches of the British Empire. In so many commercial Indian movies, there are these mass hero entry scenes where the film celebrates the stardom of the actor by showing how badass and super strong they are. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, isn't at all a bad thing. I do enjoy my fair share of these entry scenes. I'm a huge fan. But the genius of RRR is that it's a film where it takes two big superstars from the south and makes the story the hero. The reason both of these introductions work so effectively is because it strikes a perfect balance between the expectations of a mass entry scene from commercial movies while also communicating extremely vital story information about not the stars but the characters and their goals that basically drives the plot of the film moving forward. And backing that phenomenal writing is Rajamouli's direction where each and every frame serves the narrative. RRR is one of my favorite movies of the year. Hell, it could be the favorite. I literally have not at all stopped thinking about it since watching it. And I just have to do a video on it. And who knows, I might make a few more in the future. And um, yeah, this movie just deserves all the praise and acclaim it's been getting. And this is why RRR has the best character introductions. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.